Hello everyone. I just wanted to thank you for your interest and your enthusiasm about the post that I made about this little coffee cup that I made out when I was in the bush. I forgot my coffee cup and uh, I had to come up with something so I whittled this out of a piece of wood. Um, so I'm going to go through the process of how I made this cup and uh, you can do this at your own leisure within your own backyard the same way that I am doing it today. I'm going to make a few of them and gift it out to a few people. So this is the little coffee cup that I had. Um, probably the best material that you can use will be pine. Uh, it's soft and it's easy to carve. Uh, the grain is quite tight and it's quite sealed as well. Um, so let's go through that process and um, show you how to do it. The tools that I used when I was out in the bush to make this uh, cup was uh, just this little forest hatchet, uh, my trusty bushcraft knife, and uh, this fire blower. Um, I really like this fire blower. It's got a, a broad um, entry point with a narrow exit point that allows you to blow on this and all the back pressure um, is then within the pipe and not in your, you know, in your mouth or in your lungs. Um, if anyone's interested, I might show you guys how to make a fire blower that are also whittled out of wood um, and then sealed this off with some natural cordage. So um, that's what I had um, to make this cup over here. Um, the, the point of this knife is quite sharp, so it's got quite a you know, sharp um, bottom that um, is probably not ideal, but that's you know, all that I had and had to make do with what, um, what I had at the time. Uh, today, I don't have a log of pine, but what I do have is um, this block of 70 by 70 uh, pine untreated pine that I will carve out um, I think when you're looking for wood ideally you don't want to have any splits in the grain you want it nice and sealed no cracks in the wood because that's you know where the cup will leak um, and today I will also use a different hatchet that I made this one um, it's a bit lighter than that one so it's just a little bit easier to handle I've also got a different knife that I made uh, I made all these tools, which is you know I'm pretty proud of. Um, I've got I've got this blade that I'll be using. It's got a um, probably a, 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 a the tip is a bit more rounded, so that I can uh, get a proper uh, a softer um, end in that particular cup. Um, if you don't have a fire blower at home um, like this, which you know you probably most people won't you can use a, a length of bamboo which which will be quite handy as well um, the other tool that I will use today is also this carving tool it's got a, a circular end and um, that way it allows me to you know smooth out the inside of the cup a bit more so those are the tools that you'll need um, in essence you know a hatchet a knife of some sort and a fire blower and a piece of wood. The kind of fire that I'll be using to char the wood will be a Swedish stove. So this log over here has got uh, two cuts in it. It's got quite deep cuts as you can see. And what I'll do is I'll lay this um, uh, wood on top. Um, I'll make the fire and all that this kindling the coals of that kindling will fall in the cracks of this and the wood will slowly smolder away it won't make any huge flames and that will allow me to put um, you know, the, the, the cup that I'll be carving on top of here that can you know slowly char um, that cup so um, that's probably the best fire I recommend making is using the Swedish stove okay so I've got to get cracking and I'll show you the process okay the first thing I'm gonna do with this block is just round off uh, the corners to get the outside shape of the cup and then use the hatchet just to get that cylindrical finish so um, I'll do that over here and I might just fast forward through the section so um, you can just get a general idea of what I'm doing so I like to start off by shaping the bottom section first that way when I cut off a corner um, the, the wood doesn't splinter all the way down so I think I'm going to start off with the bottom section of the cup to get that, um, that molded finish. Okay. 
Okay, so that's a bit more rounded. Um, I'll keep working on this to shape the outside and then I'll get to whittling out the inside. Okay, so I think I'm just about done with the outside. It's got the, you know, it's got that tapered end bit. Um, it's, it's kind of rounded over there. It's got a smaller round bit at the base of the of the coffee pot or the coffee mug. Um, and all these little feathery bits, um, they will all burn off um, in the charring process. So I wouldn't worry to seal them off quite yet. Um, there's quite a bit of material that I removed. As you can see so now we're going to get on to whittling out the center component okay so it's whittling out the center component i'm going to use my knife um, to start drilling a hole in the center and just slowly you know taking away material it's got quite a sharp point on this particular knife uh, and then i'll switch over to the rounded tip of this particular knife it does look this knife does look a little bit you know out there and a bit scary but it is a different uh, each part of it has a different function so let's get started on uh, on this part over here. Just make sure that when you're working with sharp tools, um, that you do so safely and you do so confidently. This knife is particularly sharp and so is my axe. So I'm always trying to cut away from me. Um, in this instance, I'll be drilling down, um, and but not putting too much pressure on it, just allowing the knife to do its own work. So you can see I've got a bit of a hole over there, just from those few seconds of whittling it out. And the idea is that I'll create a shallow divot in that, and then I'll put some charring material inside of that, and that essentially turns the inside into charcoal, which we can scrape away, we can work out a little bit more, and then um, just, you know, we just repeat that process to as deep as you want this cup to be. Um, I'll make this a bit of a, a maybe a, an espresso mug, so it's not uh, too, too big or too volumetous. So keep watching and I'll keep whittling. Okay, so the process is quite slow. It's removing material about that size. And uh, we've got the hole inside that I've whittled out. And that's going to be the perfect size to put in uh, the charcoal. And then we'll char that out, soften it up, scrape it out. And we just repeat that process and until you're happy enough with the depth and the breadth of the, of the, the hole. Okay, so we've got our sweetie stove over there. So, and we've got our cup, I'll put it on for a second, but I'm just going to put it back on the Swedish stove. And let the wood warm up, dry out, and to slowly start to char around the edges, warm up on the inside and the outside. But the key of step over here is that I'm going to warm up the inside of that uh, carving that I made on the wood, because I want to essentially put some hot coals into there create a little bit of a, of a, a smoldering fire um, and just to get that inside to be charred at this stage the key is to char the inside component to make the whittling of the in um, whittling easier okay we have some uh, charcoal inside the that little divot that i made and um, i put some kindling over the top just to give it you know a bit more to burn and the key right now is to get that inside of the cup to ignite so i'm going to be using the fire blower that i showed you earlier on it's got a broader entrance on this side this this is the side where you put your lips and you blow 
and then on this side it's got a narrower entrance where you get sort of a jet stream of air coming out like I said I like this because this hole um, extends to probably about the almost the full length of the fire blower and that last little small passages at the end that allows the the back pressure of air to be inside here as opposed to you know inside your lungs or inside of your mouth um, if you don't have one of these you can also use a piece of bamboo um, with uh, you know that flows through from one end to the other so I'll just show you how to use the fly blower and to ignite those embers Okay, so this is what our mug looks like now after it's been charred on the inside and allowed to cool down so it's cool to the touch so we can start working on that again um, so this this makes it a lot easier to whittle okay, as you can see it just comes off until you get to that layer where the wood is so the process that we follow is just repeating this so we're gonna whittle out all this charcoal bits until it gets to the wooden layer and if it gets too hard to whittle that out then we just repeat that um, charring process like I said you do it as as often as you need to depending on on the depth and the breadth of the hole um, it is quite handy to put the charcoal in at the bottom and then keep all these wooden shavings that you can add to the top that just slowly smolders within the cup because um, the bottom tends to burn a bit slower because there's less oxygen in that section and there's more oxygen in the top so you tend to burn away the outer rim a lot quicker um, this is an experiment it's just you know a creativity that you choose to do because you just enjoy making things that are rough <laughs> rough and ready I guess um, and that's what I enjoy doing, making things functional but beautiful. So I'll just keep repeating this process. And once I'm happy with uh, the charring of the inside or the depth that I need to get, then I'll char the outside just to finish it off. And, um, and I'll take you through that step when we get there. I've just completed the final char. And I'm quite happy with the depth of this. It's quite deep. Uh, it'll hold enough fluids. Um, and um, this particular tool over here uh, is proving to be quite handy uh, I haven't used it before but it's quite nice to have this rounded edge that sharp edge and um, being able to scrape it off from the inside See how nicely it just peels all that charred material away. It's much easier using uh, this tool once you get to the deep, deeper section compared to you know a blade that is you know quite pointy and quite hard to to dig in. Um, the bottom of this particular cup is a lot um, is a lot flatter and shallower, like a little cup like this, because I was able to use this tool. Um, but you know, like I said, this is a, this is uh, something that I made to be rough and ready. It is it was just an improvised cup for camp, and um, yeah, so I'll clean up the inside, and then I'll char the outside. Okay, we're ready now to char the outside of the cup. Um, we're going to be putting that on the Swedish stove, and I'll use my trusty tongs just to keep rotating. rotating it 
So that way we get a nice even char on the outside that we will brush some of the material off um, and then polish some of that um, powdery char material back into the grain to seal it. So I'll keep rotating it slowly. So that's it guys, it's not really that complicated. We have a nice deep even char mostly towards the bottom of the cup. <clears throat> I try to keep some of the heat off the top lip because that's where it thins out and I don't want it to become too thin and too brittle. Um, you can see I sort of scratched out the inside of the cup um, which I will clean out and polish out as well. So the, the plan now is <coughs> to to brush all this uh, char off, I'm going to be using a, a wire brush. Um, that will also lift and expose the grain and just give it a beautiful luster and just a beautiful appearance. Um, the polish that I'll be using on this will be a, um, a mix between beeswax and food grade uh, mineral oil. They are both you know, food grade substances uh, and it seals wood quite nicely. Um, and that's, you know, um, will work quite well. So let me get on with that and then I'll show you the final product. I just finished wire brushing this and this is about the as much char material that I want to leave on. Um, it will allow us, you know, to really polish in that fine charcoal into the grain to seal it. Um, the other feature that I really love is that um, when you wire brush or when you char on wire brush, it actually lifts the grain, giving it some extra texture and extra appeal. Um, as you can see, you know, the top rim of the cup is quite uneven. Um, I like leaving that there because it just adds to the natural, you know, appeal of the cup. So that's that's uh, that's it for the wire brushing. Um, and all that I'm really left to do now is probably just you know to give it a dust and then polish in quite heavily with that beeswax mineral oil mixture. Um, when I do the beeswax on the inside, I think what I'll do is I'll add quite a bit in there um, and then try to let it melt and really absorb into the grain just to give it that extra depth of protection and um, um, you know depth of penetration of that that those oils to keep it waterproof and try to keep the the, the wood um, you know in its original condition and prevent it from splitting and leaking. We finished off our cup and we've sealed it with some butcher's block sealant. This is food grade um, beeswax and mineral oil that is mixed. And then we add it and we just layer it onto this cup, polish it in burn, like, with heat and friction. And that just soaks, in, soaks into the wood and allows those pores to seal with that particular sealant. I added in some to the middle of the cup as well and put it in the oven just to let it melt and soak into the temperature for that added level of protection. So this is our finished cup, whittled and burnished and carved just from one single piece of wood. It took me uh, probably about three hours. It was uh, a lot longer than the initial project that I had because I was lucky enough to get a piece of timber that had um, wood rot on the inside so I could really carve that middle out a lot quicker. It took me maybe for the first one I did 45 minutes. Uh, this one just took me over three hours because the wood is quite hard and it's beautifully sealed. Uh, I probably got a little bit too much char on there, but that just adds to the character. Um, I also like, you know, you know, the uneven top, which just again adds to that, that character. So I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope it inspired you to do something different and make something of your own. Cheers. Okay, this is the equipment that you're going to need to make your own or whittle your own cup. You're going to need some sort of forest hatchet, um, something that is light that can, you know, you can move quite easily. I've got some um, different types of bushcraft knives for different purposes. Um, I also um, enjoyed using this particular carving tool. I got it at the local hardware store. Uh, it cost really, you know, next to nothing. Um, and it just helps to carve out that, that center portion and the bottom portion of the cup really easily. Um, I also have our, um, our fire blower over here so that's 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 so handy when we're trying to char out the center of the cup and in the far back we got our wire brush um, it is a bit of a dirty job 
So you, you expect to get you know your hands dirty and dusty with this. Uh, but I hope you enjoy the project.